This week on the Stampede, the wait is over. The SMU Mustangs' first test is finally here. Mustangs coach and three-time Super Bowl champion Adrian Clem tells us what drives him to be a champion recruiter as well. They realize they have a great opportunity coming here, and it's a lot different than other places to get the best of both worlds. And after a tumultuous week in college football realignment, SMU looks to secure their position for the future. Dallas has a huge number of people who would like to be able to regularly see SMU versus an AQ school. It's the final week of preparation before the SMU Mustangs kick off the 2011 season. And this may be the biggest opening game in the June Jones era yet. The Ponies are set to enter the deafening howl of Kyle Field to square off with the top 10 ranked Texas A&M Aggies. I think we're pretty, uh, feeling pretty good. We've been working hard this week. It's a focus week for us. If he goes away from you, then you're going to try to bump his inside shoulder and you'll be vertical to the quarterback, okay? We're trying to pick up the intensity in practice. You know, we got to get ready for a and uh, They're a good team, and for us to be able to beat them, we got to play really well. Uh, we have to believe. And uh, we put in a lot of work during practice and stuff during two of the days. So I think we really you know. We all believe in one another, so we're just going to go out there and prove to everybody else. Texas A&M looks like they, they have a lot of uh, talent, a lot of depth on defense. They got speed, they got quickness, they got corners, they got a uh, wide receiver and a running back. They'll probably be a top 10 selections in the NFL. They got a lot of talent. Honestly, it's their defense is pretty similar to our own. So we're able to, I mean, we add some stuff and work on some scout team stuff, but we get to practice their looks just by going against our own defense. We've been doing a lot of that. Get it. That's it. Good, good, good. The Mustangs are a mature team with 10 offensive and eight defensive starters returning to the gridiron this season. And they're showing a seasoned team's perspective by focusing beyond just the physical aspects of the game. It, it just takes everyone's commitment, the mental aspect involved with, with staying focused during practice. Your head went down only because you was leaning over. You overextended, you know what I mean? No mental mistakes, because it's the first game. We might have a lot of guys not that have never played, you know, a lot. Can't make mistakes, and we got to get to turnovers, and, uh, you know, we got to go out there and play with their, meet their intensity, because they're at home with the 12th man and toy soldiers and all those people, so we got to meet that intensity. You know, we've been going at it all summer, and um, I think it's finally, you know, it's exciting to, to have an actual opponent to be, you know, preparing for in the meetings and looking at. We started looking at A&M film this week and uh, just breaking them down and getting ready for Sunday. Yeah, we're a little anxious. Uh, we actually, uh, we're starting to look at the film now at A&M, so we're just looking at the different types of schemes. You know, we just, in practice, we get the scout team to give us a look and see how they're going to be. But right now, we're just really anxious and can't wait to get ready to play. Whatever happens, this is a team that's determined not to lose focus. Going to bowl games and having a successful season is always an outgrowth of how you approach each game, each play, each you know competition, each tough situation that comes through the course of a season. It's, as June says, it's a journey, and we're about to take that first step at Texas A&M. We know we have a chance, and we're just excited to get down there and see what we can do. Uh, I expect us to go in there with a mindset that we came in there to kick butt. We respect them highly, but we will be prepared to play them. Much respect to their team, much respect to their coaches, but I mean, we're going there to, to win, definitely. And I can care less about the rest of the season and worry about this one, this one game first. I'm finishing out this week, this week and this week only, and then we'll work on the next week. I feel like we're headed in a positive direction, but until you do it game day, you know, uh, at 6.30 down there at uh, Texas A&M, you just never know. It's a new breed of Mustangs, and like I said, we're real confident. One, two, three, Mustang! This week, we sit down with All Conference USA offensive lineman and team captain Kelvin Beecham for his thoughts on Coach Jones, intensity in the weight room, and taking SMU to the next level. Tell us what you did in the offseason. 
Uh, last spring, um, got in the weight room. I really didn't take off uh, in May. Came in, uh, went all of May except for one week. I got uh, five wisdom teeth pulled at one time, which was not a uh, enjoyable moment. And took a week off to kind of recover from that. Um, other than that, it was working out and, and hanging with my friends and uh, spending a little time with the family. Didn't get much time, but the time I did have with them, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I come here and I'm here all day and enjoy the people here and, and love what I get to do. Run, block, or pass protection? Which do you prefer? Pass blocker. I, I love, it, it's just, it's so, I mean, cause at the end of the day, pass blocking turns into run blocking. It turns into that physical nature. And we don't get, you know, in, in, the, in a pass heavy offense, people think that, you know, it's, it's passive and it's, it's not physical, but the way we pass pro, it, it turns into to a drive block at the end of the play. Who is June Jones? What's this guy all about? Coach Jones is calm, cool, and collected. In the pressure moments, when man measures man, he's calm, cool, and collected. He's able to effectively coach. He's able to effectively teach. At the same time, he's able to have his team perform at a high level. And him being a coach, perform at a high level and coach at a high level. You're a warrior in the weight room. How much can you lift? You know, I'm not the strongest guy um, on, on, on the offensive line, but uh, I've made gains um, in a lot of places. You know, when, when Coach Mayo, who was the, the strength coach now, when he first got here, he used to put me through an arm workout, and I would be dead because I had to follow him, so it was bang, 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 bang. He lift, I lift. He lift, I lift. And now it's to the point where I run the workout. So it's him trying to catch up with me. So that type of, that's how I know I've gained a lot as far as stamina, strength, endurance from, you know, just two years ago. But um, lifting wise, you know, man, I don't know my numbers. I just put the weight on and just try to push myself every time. What will it take for SMU to take it to the next level? Consistency. Uh, and pretty much, that's pretty much what it boils down to, is consistency. Being able to sustain a high level of performance consistently. And, you know, anybody can come out and win one game here, one game there, and say, oh, we ready for the, for the next level. But the next level is being able to come out week after week after week after week and being able to perform at a high level week after week after week. Give us your advice to young players aspiring for college football success. Aspiring players, you just got to work your butt off. Uh, it's a daily affair. You know, I kind of compare football to my walk with, with Christ. You have to live for God every day. You got to work out every day. In some shape, form, or fashion, you got to do something that's geared toward your craft. You got to work hard every single day. Take no days off. Even if it's Sunday, you know you got to go to church, you go watch film, you do some push-ups, something, sit up, something. It has to be something that you do every day. It has to become in you. If you really love your sport, you can do whatever it takes to be the best at, at, at that sport. And it's one thing that Coach Gans talks about is having the, the pain of regret, knowing that I, I, I'm painting, it's hurting me that I didn't do everything that I knew how to do to be the best at what I know I can do. In your opinion, what will it take to beat teams like Texas A&M? Being consistent and, and being able to do the little things more consistently than they do. You know, we're not, you know, it ain't been no hula type of practices. We know what we got to do. We're going in there for a mission. We're going in there to, to do what we got to do, get back on the bus and come on back home. June Jones is the face of SMU football but he's assembled an impressive staff. Offensive line coach, Super Bowl champion Adrian Clem, who's in his fourth year with the team, has quickly made his presence felt. With him, with recruiting, he takes it like it's a game. Like, I mean, I'm gonna be the best at recruiting. I'm gonna recruit hard. I'm gonna go over to the, to the West Coast and take your players. I'm gonna go down to East Texas and take your players. You know, June 
and Coach Ross gave me the opportunity to go out and recruit outside the state of Texas. I recruited inside the state too, but we just kind of expanded a little bit to see what we can get. And some of our bigger recruits came from out of state. Um, going out, they didn't know much about us initially, but one of the things that you know I've always said, and Coach Ross always said, if we can just get them on campus, we'll have a chance. Clem dug deep into his Southern California roots by bringing in top recruits to SMU, such as offensive lineman Dante Livingston and quarterback Connor Preston. They realize they have a great opportunity coming here, and it's a lot different than other places. You get the best of both worlds. You know, you're in a competitive environment. You're gonna have a chance to compete for uh, conference championship every year. You know, guys that want, um, that have the desire to go to that next level, who better than to help you get there than guys that have been there and know what it takes, knows, you know, that know what guys are looking for. And so, um, and obviously, what we have to offer academically is, is second to none. So, uh, when you take the whole thing and guys really take the time to look at it and they come out here and they see what it's like, uh, it's really hard for guys to turn that down. Out of all the schools I ever got, you know, I got recruited by in Miami and Colorado, and I definitely felt that he, uh, the, the way that he approached me was different from any of the rest. And um, I think he, you know, he's building something special here and really helping Coach Jones bring in the, the talent to run this offense and defense. Expect something come from the outside here. Yeah. Clem was ranked the number one non-BCS recruiter in the nation by Rivals.com. Fox Sports gave him the title of 2010 Conference USA Recruiter of the Year. Clem's main focus is helping his players, on the field, of course, and off. You need to have something to fall back on, so I really push in terms of education and taking it serious. In a place like this, SMU, where you have um, everything, you know, within reach in terms of uh, uh, the connections and the alumni that reach out to help you. and. Uh, people coming here to recruit people, not just because you're a football player, but just because you're, you know, a graduate from the school. You know, the school. You know, you want to have success on the field, but there's with success on the field, you're going to get a jump start on life. But it's not over. You know, just because of that. I mean, once you're done with football, you're going to have to move on and do something else. I've just been very fortunate and blessed that I can still stay in this type of environment. But not everybody can do that, so you have to be prepared for the real world. Meanwhile. The day before the game, the team puts its finishing touches on the A&M game plan. Saturday morning, just our normal walkthrough. We get about 40 plays of all the situations. We get back on the goal line inside 15 again. And then all the special situations, Big Ben, how to end the game, how to go through two minute again. And it's just that last time to go fine tune it. After lunch, the team board the buses for the ride south to A&M. Finally, the Mustangs enter hostile territory. We, we put on the music this week to try to help them, but uh, you know, the biggest thing is they focus on the play and, the, and their responsibility and not worry about the fan. Even though they say there's a 12th man, there's only 11 on the field. After another big lunch and a taping session, it's back on the bus for the first game of the season. The big story swirling around college football is conference realignment. On August 31st, Texas A&M notified the Big 12 of its intentions to exit in June of 2012, most likely for the SEC. The Aggies' decision sent shockwaves through college football, and more dominoes seem certain to fall. The question is, what does all of this mean for the SMU Mustangs? There will be some changes immediately. And uh, whether we're involved with those or not, I don't know. I mean, the Big 12's obviously going to add one school. I don't think we're that school. Uh, but there's, there'll be phases two and three, you know, from starting today. And, and I think this may, this may take a couple of years, but I may be wrong. I don't think it's going to take five years uh, for everything to sort of uh, uh, resettle in some way. And so our view is, is that we simply need to make our point about the university and that we are ready. Uh, for BCSAQ status, and how that comes uh, is any one of a number of ways. Uh, just the, the three that are most obvious right now, you know, are through our own conference, through Big 12 or through Big East, since they're the ones that are around here. But it may come some other way. Bringing an automatic qualifying BCS status environment to Dallas would be great for any conference, and vice versa. Dallas itself is a, is a huge draw, and we believe that uh, even though we may not be as large as some state universities, we have 11,000 students and about 100,000 alumni, uh, that there are a lot of other people in Dallas who would love to see our football games if they were against an AQ school. If you look at whenever we play Tech or TCU or some old rival like that, uh, 
Ford Stadium, we have people sitting on the berm, and that berm, of course, can be expanded into a 40,000 seat stadium uh, within about a year to year and a half of work. Uh, so we just believe Dallas has a huge number of people who would like to be able to regularly see SMU versus an AQ school. SMU President Dr. Gerald Turner sees many options for SMU. Our first goal would be for Conference USA by itself or with the Mountain West or in some combination to get an automatic qualifying uh, status. But so far that's not been possible and if it's not well then we obviously would like to have be in a conference where there is that AQ status. And we believe it's very important for Dallas because Dallas is a huge city not to have an AQ school. I personally think if a little logic would set in, the most likely would be a combination of Conference USA and Mountain West and add it as an AQ conference and then I think most of the issues would be done. Finally, the Mustangs arrive at Kyle Field in College Military Station. The atmosphere is one of the most raucous and traditional in all of college football. 83,000 fans, yell leaders, and the blaring Fightin' Texas Aggie Band all on hand to cheer on their Aggies. They officially say it's 98 degrees as we approach kickoff here. All right, guys, just like we said, and we practiced all spring, all fall, all summer, everything was for this opportunity to be right here, right now. We need to get out of here plus three, and we go home winners with something accomplished that you'll remember the rest of your lives, okay, the rest of your lives. Enjoy it and have fun. Grab a hand. SMU, the game was over early. A pair of quick interceptions led to easy Aggie touchdowns. The field at the 37 yard line, turning inside to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and finally tackled down at the six yard line. It's Stephen Campbell. Right to the five and across the goal line. Touchdown, Christian Michael. Throws it deep and overthrows it, and it's going to be intercepted once again. This is Trent Hunter coming right at the 40, 45, 50, dances, and he's going to be tackled by Kelly. Here is Cyrus Gray off of left guard to the two, to the one, touchdown, Texas A&M. Surprisingly, June Jones replaced starting quarterback Kyle Padron on just the third series with senior backup J.J. McDermott. McDermott's presence seemed to provide a spark, or at least a calming influence. The Mustangs mounted a seven-play, 60-yard drive that featured the powerful running of Zach Lyon. And up Zach Lyon, going right, huge hole to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, breaks two tackles to the goal line, touchdown SMU! Tied into the right as Bradley Haynes handoff is to Zach Lyon, and he dances right by one tackler into the end zone. With a score now, Texas A&M 14, SMU 7, Coach June Jones rolled the dice and called for an onside kick. But the execution was botched, and the Aggies got the ball. A few plays later, Cyrus Gray plunged over from the two. Marcus Hunt blocked the extra point. Texas A&M 20, SMU 7. Far side of the field, and that's Jagera Davis to the 30. Breaks inside to the 40. One man to beat, and he gets his feet clipped at midfield. With the game threatening to get out of hand, J.J. McDermott led the Mustangs on another scoring drive. Climaxed with a 27-yard strike to Keenan Holman. But unfortunately, 
SMU would not score again. And the Mustang defense could not stop the Aggie offense. The final score, Texas A&M 46, SMU 14. The Mustangs came into this game hoping to make a statement, so the result was obviously a major disappointment. Still, there were bright spots even in defeat. Junior running back Zach Line had over 100 yards on the ground in just the first half and finished with 128 yards on 22 carries. J.J. McDermott proved he can run June Jones' run and shoot, completing 21 of 34 passes for 254 yards. Free safety Chris Banjo had 11 tackles, and Cole Beasley caught seven balls. Six foot eight inch defensive end Marcus Hunt blocked a pair of extra points, giving him six for his career. Tied for second best in NCAA history. When we came out, we didn't execute as good as we could, but we played, you know, we finished. So our job is to get back into practice, you know, practice hard as we can to get better, get ready for Utah. First thing is we ran into a really good football team and and, uh, yeah, we so kind of let it get out of hand a little bit early, and uh, they established their running game on our defense, which I didn't think they could, and it just kind of got away from us as, as the game went. Uh, that was a good football team, and we got to regroup now and uh, get ready for the ones ahead of us. One game doesn't make a season. From here, obviously, we got to work on starting fast and uh, eliminating all the turnovers. I mean, that really hurt us in the beginning and got us down from the get-go. So, I mean, we really got to work on that aspect. Obviously got to play better than we did tonight. Uh, I mean, throw the ball better, catch the ball better, block better, um, just to all facets, you know, play better defensively. So, I mean, we're, we're going to get back to it Tuesday and, and try and get after UTEP. The Mustangs left Kyle Field with a number of questions swirling around the team. Was this game an aberration? Is the quarterback job up for grabs? How will the team handle adversity? Next Saturday, we'll find out as the Mustangs return to the friendly confines of Gerald J. Ford and their home opener against conference rival UTEP. Kickoff is slated for 6 p.m.